Charlie Ham will kick it away for the white team. These teams were drafted by players. And there's apparently a little junk being exchanged <laughs> in the facility this week. There's no doubt about that. Ham's kick is end over end, and Samir Hagens, one of the top return men in the ACC, lets it skip. And the blue team will start at the 25. So as far as spring games are concerned, we've seen a lot of this in the ACC this spring. This is pretty close to a real game, Dustin. Well, at least the first half. They're going to play 15-minute quarters, and we'll kind of see where we're at in the second half in terms of the time. They may adjust that. It could be 12 minutes, could be 10, possibly a running clock. And remember, the quarterback in the red jersey, which is Riley Leonard, he's not going to be able to be live today. Uh, we, we may see some of the other quarterbacks live, but uh, he, everything else is live to the ground outside of kickoffs and punt returns. So again, these teams were drafted by players. Yep. Riley Leonard, as you might have guessed, was the first overall pick, and he's at the helm <laughs> of the blue team. Leonard's first pass of the 2023 spring game caught for a moment, and they're going to rule that a complete pass to Malik Bowen Sims, number 18, the senior from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Yeah, nice little quick start by Leonard. Quick drop back. Second and one. They've got a plethora of, of weapons back, Drew, on this offense. Nearly every skill position, wide receivers, running backs, return. Yeah, they bring back their top 11 wide receivers and almost all of their ground production, including Jordan Waters, the grad student from North Carolina who moves the chains. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who sort of jumps out at running back. We're going to see a lot of Waters, Moore, Peyton Jones, the young freshman who's having a great camp as well, Jalen Coleman. Yeah, the offensive coordinator, Kevin Johns, and... Year two told us they love the three old running backs, as he told us. On first down, Leonard to throw again. This is where he's special, making things happen. That throw on the run is snatched by Hagens. A nice grab right at the first down marker. No doubt, you're right about that. His ability to, to get out of the pocket. This thing breaks down. He, look at him scan the field, gets outside the pocket. He probably could have you know, just took off and run for the first down, but somehow finds Hagens for the completion. Yeah, so much depth in this receiving core, including Jordan Moore. We talked about the quarterback competition that Leonard won last year. It was with Moore, who converted to wide receiver and was their second most productive in terms of catches and yards last season. This is another short second down, and this run's going nowhere. It's a Duke defense that brings back a lot of production as well. Ryan Smith is in there first on that stop. Yeah, it's one of the, the better defenses last year in the entire country. And as we go, we'll talk more about not just the personnel, but the new defensive coordinator, Tyler Santucci, comes over from Texas A&M as uh, Rob Smith uh, moved on. I yeah, wanted to spend some more time with his family moving back to Minnesota. So Tyler Santucci rejoins Mike Elko. They've now coached together at a variety of different schools all across the country. This is third down and short. Leonard with time floats it up the sideline, trying to find Hagens. A flag comes in as it falls incomplete inside the red zone. Josh Pickett was in coverage. Yeah, Pickett's going to get a lot of a jersey on this. That's why the timing was off on this throw. Defense number 26, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. But one of the things that offensive coordinator Johns uh, told us, Coach Johns, said they want to take some shots in this game. They want to see Leonard get the football down the field, test some of these young corners. like that call on first down. Yeah, on the white team, we'll see Josh Pickett, who got hit with the flag there, and then Chandler Rivers on the other side. On the blue team, Al Blades and Miles Jones, the two transfers who they're really excited about. Leonard on the rollout. Another nice throw, lays it in there softly for a first down blue team, Jalen Calhoun, their top wide receiver from a year ago. Nice job by Leonard getting outside the pocket there on the little naked bootleg. Gives him an option whether he wants to throw the football down the field or take off and run. Don't imagine we'll see him run that much tonight as he's not, not a live candidate to go to the ground. Well, my thing about spring games, Dustin, is mm -hmm. if, you get, if you get the red jersey on, why don't you just take off? All the time, right? Add the stats. What are they going to do? <laughs> Again, it's Waters. 
Jordan Waters, who led Duke among yeah. running backs in rushes and yards last year. Riley Leonard was actually their top runner and ran for 13 touchdowns himself. But they've got those three guys back who Kevin Johns was telling us about. The three J's in the backfield. Jordan Waters, who we've seen. Jalen Jalen Coleman is also on the blue team. And then Jacquez Moore as well. And Coleman probably the fastest of the three. All of them are going to play. That just gives you so much flexibility if you're Kevin Johns. Another completion. Again, it's Calhoun. And again, he moves the chains as the blue team is inside the 15. Jalen Calhoun with a couple of Dart by Riley Leonard. Looks off to the left, comes right back on a quick slant to Calhoun. You can already see that connection has sort of been building since last year. Calhoun last year, 62 catches, 873 yards, and four touchdowns. That one went for 17. Working that clock in this deliberate opening drive of the spring game. Waters with the carry, picks up one, maybe two. So Dustin, when you were playing at Ohio State, yeah. what were the spring games like? What were you trying to accomplish? Uh, you're trying to get out of there healthy <laughs> after, you know, 14 padded practices. And, you know, it was fun. I mean, we were at the Horseshoe. There was a big crowd, and, and that was a lot of fun. We did a draft, too, which made it kind of unique because, you, again, my senior year, I got to pick, got to draft some players. So it was a lot of fun to, to do, do that, take part in that. And, and again, what, again, when I was at Ohio State, the losing team had to walk back to the facility, <laughs> which is about half a mile away. Oh, no. Yeah. Did you win? Well, we did. We did. Who was your first pick? Oh, goodness. I, come on. I'm old. <laughs> Yourself? That was 16 years ago. Someone is at home watching. Someone in Columbus who remembers. Uh, but Mike Elko, it's a way he can keep this spring game competitive. We've seen the blue team driving, led by Riley Leonard, who again was the first pick in that draft. As expected, they face a third down and six here. Got to get to the four-yard line. Fields the low snap, looking to his right. In the end zone, caught for a touchdown. Jalen Calhoun has the first score for the blue team. And Riley Leonard picks up right where he left off in 2022. Yeah, I think if you're Duke and, and, and Mike Elko and Kevin Johns right now, that's exactly what you want to see. Almost a, a perfectly executed drive by the blue team and Riley Leonard going all the way down the field. Calhoun making a lot of plays. And right there, a beautiful throw to the back shoulder. Todd Polino tacks on the extra point. Riley Leonard slicing and dicing in the spring game, Dustin. Yeah, heck of a throw here by Leonard. Opening drive, go right down the field. The back shoulder throw is beautiful to Calhoun. Blue team up early, 7-0 from Durham. All smiles for Mike Elko to start. Blue team is up, led by Riley Leonard in the blue and white game. And going back to that military bowl, Dustin, this is really what we saw from Duke all year. Leonard running for touchdowns, mm -hmm. defense forcing turnovers. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a, a great game passing for Leonard, but he didn't have to pass for a ton. The defense was phenomenal in that ball game. And you think about the fact that Duke, the history of this program, they've only been to 14 bowl games. So it's big for them to get back to a bowl game, win nine games. And now this year, you want to get to double-digit wins and get back to a bowl game and compete for the ACC. Edwin Moore on the kick return there. Again, it's thud on kick return. So once they get hit, the whistle blows. But now we'll get the first look at the white team offense, led by Henry Beal in the fourth, the redshirt freshman from New York. And by the way, you mentioned the history of Duke football. I teased it off the top. The other four Duke coaches to win ACC Coach of the Year. Steve Spurrier, Fred Goldsmith, David Cutcliffe, and Bill Murray. Not to be confused with the other Bill Murray. You sound like West Durham with those stats. That's, that's good <laughs> stuff, man. West Durham not, will be not, here tomorrow not, not for Not the baseball. actor Bill Murray, right? Not the actor okay. Bill Murray. Okay. The coach Bill Murray. First carry for the white team goes to Peyton Jones, the freshman from Norfolk, Virginia. And this is a guy the coaching staff is fired up about. Yeah, he's been a, a big surprise for this Duke offense here in camp for such a young player who just basically arrived on campus. Amazing vision, 
coaches were raving about his ability to make cuts without them kind of having to tell him where he's got to go. He's got great instincts. Yeah, when we asked Kevin Johns, give us a name with all the returning production that might surprise people this year, Peyton Jones was the first one he said. No gain on his first carry, though. This time, Beelan keeps. Henry Beelan with a stiff arm. This quarterback is live. No red jersey on number yeah. three. No, he, he's live. And that's, to me, I, I was a little surprised when we talked with Coach Elko about the quarterbacks outside of Riley Leonard being live because they only carry three quarterbacks on their entire roster. You know, some of these teams have four or five guys and, and some, some backups and their walk-ons, and they just got three scholarship quarterbacks. So a little dangerous to have Beelan be live, but you see his ability right there. He was the backup last year. Yeah, the two guys behind Leonard, the only other two on the roster, are both freshmen. Yeah. Beelan was a backup last year, but he's listed as a redshirt freshman. Not a whole lot of game experience. On third down and three, Beelan floats it. Nice grab. And Jordan Moore has the first down. Now, really, if they do need an emergency quarterback, this guy's got some experience. Jordan and, and, and take, Moore entered as the number two last Take last. a look at the hit that Beelan takes here from Cam Dillon, 35, as he delivers this football. Takes a shot. Delivers the strike for the first down. You see the numbers for Jordan Moore after he converted in the last week of the offseason to playing wide receiver. Yeah, they knew he had the speed, the ability, but they kind of had to, to teach him how to run routes to get in and out of his cuts and breaks. And by the time he ends up the season, 60 catches for a guy who's never played wide receiver. Yeah, they had to keep him on the field. They found a pretty good way to use him. That they did. That first down pass was batted down by Samaj Turner, 43 in blue tonight. Yeah, Jordan Moore had that big game. Remember last year at Pitt, 14 catches, 199 yards, and a touchdown for a converted quarterback? That's not bad. Yeah, he looked pretty comfortable in his new position. Beelan with the pressure on. Again, Beelan tucks it and runs. And again, the quarterback takes a couple shots, but he carries defenders for a first down gain of 13. see his athletic ability and not quite as athletic as Leonard it off there almost broke the ankles of Miles Jones the transfer cornerback from Texas A&M Peyton Jones still the running back for the white team it's a team with Jacquez Moore been all Jones on their first series. That pass from Beelan is complete. And again, it's Jordan Moore. Goes for nine yards on first down. Now you can already see that Jordan Moore is settling into his wide receiver position. As we talked about last year, he was competing with Riley Leonard for the starting quarterback job here in this very game. And already off to a pretty fast start for the white team. Again, it's the freshman Jones. This time he is going nowhere. Stuffed by Placide Jungu Sungu, the redshirt sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Big, big quickly, hit. Quickly and with conviction. That's why you're the professional here. <laughs> you just call him 15. <laughs> There's another name for Duke in the linebacking core that's just amazing. We're hoping we see 38 at some point tonight. 38 in a white jersey. Might create some memories. I see what you did there. Yeah. So the loss on a carry on second down sets up third and four. They snap it with one on the play clock and complete. Beelin with a dart. It's John Tavis Robertson. The senior out of Georgia moves the chains. Yeah, and the blue team's good. going to come with the blitz right at the middle. Mausi number eight comes in nearly gets a paw on the football and again the pressure that beelan has been able to avoid and, and get the football out of his hands quickly has, has been pretty impressive you know the one thing they said about Beelan last year is you know he took a lot of reps in practice right but never got into a game so he kind of became almost like a coach in that in the uh, the quarterback room 
but needs to get some game experience to sort of get comfortable playing the position. Hands off again to the freshman Jones for a short gain on first down. Yeah, lots of reps with the ones and twos for Beelan last season. But again, Dustin, I, mean, I think we were both surprised. Only three quarterbacks on the roster. That's a pretty light group. It would make me nervous every time in this game when Beelan takes a shot. When Mausi is streaking up yeah, the middle, he's like screaming that. up the middle, the A cap. This is the tenth play of the drive, the first one for the white team. Beelan looks, fires, caught by Moore. He's got the hands, even when he was playing quarterback, and he takes that one in the red zone. First down, James Hobson on the tackle after a gain of 12. Beelan, his arm looks live. And Coach Johns had mentioned his arm actually might be a little bit stronger than Riley Leonard. Not quite the runner, obviously, but so far, throwing a couple of darts. And the other quarterback we'll see for Team White is Grayson Loftus, the early enrollee freshman from Gaffney, South Carolina. He's also got a can of an arm. Already under four minutes in this first quarter. Both offenses with long drives to start. It's Peyton Jones, a little wiggle, fighting for extra yards against Al Blades, the Miami transfer. So Blades and Jones are the starting corners for the blue team. Blades from Miami, Jones from A&M. And Blades has got a pretty impressive uh, pedigree. Yeah. From uh, his family, a lot of, a lot of NFL players, uncles, father. Yeah, the late Al Blades senior. He played at Miami, and his uncles, you mentioned Brian and Benny Blades, mm -hmm. two of the better DBs in Miami history. Benny was the third pick in the NFL draft. Benny and the Jets back in the day. I was going to say it, man. There's a West Durham reference for you. Good tackle there from Cam Dillon. One of the returners had a nice season last year, 61 tackles. Now we talked about the returning production on offense. They bring a lot of guys back on defense as well, but they did lose their two top tacklers from last year, Darius Joyner and Shaka Hayward. And we'll talk a little bit about Shaka maybe at halftime is he's got an opportunity here to be drafted next weekend. Both teams three for three on third down to start this spring game. This third down and seven, Beelin tucks it. Again brought down, but again, he's got the necessary yardage. Takes it inside the 10 as James Hobson makes the stop after a gain of eight. Yeah, and he was gonna be stopped short. It's impressive to see Beelin show this effort in a game that's an exhibition to pick up that first down and give him first and goal. I mean, if you're a defensive player, he's not wearing a red jersey, but you're probably going to hold up a little bit, right? No. Not at all? No, no. We, we didn't. I mean, we, our starting quarterbacks were, uh, were wearing red jerseys, but the, the backups were not. And uh, needless to say, we unloaded on them. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> Beelin rolling to his right. Tried to squeeze it in a tight window to Moore. Good coverage by, yeah. yeah, good coverage by Al Blades. They're really excited about this kid. Got a lot of ability. Just had himself a nice spring camp here. Just gets that left paw in there. That was a, a really good throw. Tried to squeeze into a very tight window there in the corner of the end zone. It'll be interesting to see how the cornerback depth chart shakes out this fall for Duke with Blades and Jones coming mm -hmm. in and then Pickett and Rivers still on the roster. Of course, Brandon Johnson, the nickelback, will be out there pretty much every snap. This is the 15th play of this drive. And you try to swing it out to the running back, Jones, deflected at the line of scrimmage, incomplete, brings up another third down. Might have been Cam Dillon again making a play on the football coming off the edge. So speaking of those transfers, Blades and Jones, the two we've talked about already, you know, Mike Elko's philosophy on NIL and transfer portal Basically exactly what you want to hear if you're a Duke fan, the guys who got to fit the culture, which they've already established here in year two. Yeah, they're not taking a ton of guys out of the portal, but they'll take the right ones. 
On third and goal, Beelin rips it, incomplete. Looking in the end zone. There's another one There's of those transfers, Miles Jones, who's in coverage. And a flag down inside the five. This is a real game, folks. We've got penalties. An eligible receiver downfield, offense number 70, 63. That penalty is applied. It's all to the play for a Did you and the official get a workout in together this morning? Or? <laughs> Has both got the the uh, the pipes. I need the tighter sleeves, though. <laughs> That's a schmedium. <laughs> Brings out Charlie Ham for a 23-yard field goal. Ham last year nine for 15 on field goals, and his first one in the spring game right through. So the white team is on the board. After a drive of 15 plus plays, they settle for the field goal. 17 plays in total, 68 yards, a buck 27 to go in the first. Welcome back to Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham. Blue and white game for Duke football coming off a nine win season where they stunned everybody. They lost nine games each of the previous two years, then won nine in year one under Mike Elko. Second in the country in turnover margin, second in the ACC in time of possession, and you see how they totally flipped the script on offense and defense and completely changed expectations heading into this year. Charlie Ham sends it away. Samir Hagens lets it bounce, but Dustin, Mike Elko on a podcast earlier this year said something I found interesting. They basically have to compete against their own success now, avoiding complacency. It's a different sort of headspace that Duke is in. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that he, he makes those comments, but when you do all of a sudden have a lot of success rather quickly, it's easy for a team to think, well, we've arrived, right? And they certainly have not arrived. They're, it was a very impressive season last year, but still a lot of steps to go for them to get back to where they want to be this year especially we'll talk about the schedule coming up a little bit later in the broadcast it is a booger bear of a schedule <laughs> is that, that a means they it, teach you at duke that means it's tough yeah it's from the ohio state university i don't know where i heard that one of my coaches once said that jalen coleman the running back for duke is riley leonard back to work he was five for five on his first drive and that one falls incomplete, trying to get it to Malik Bowen Sims. But Elko said, you know, we really don't talk about the external noise. Discussed it last year. You know, people had a lot of opinions about who we are, what we're going to do. We need to block that out. Now it's the same just for the opposite reason, right? Everyone said they wouldn't be very good last year, picked to finish last in the division in the ACC. Now everyone is kind of hyping them up a little bit, and they've got to tune that out as well. Yeah, and I really liked his his honesty with us when talking about last season and talking about this season because, look, when he arrived, there was so much to learn for him. Not just learning the personnel, like who's going to be the starting quarterback, but just kind of, kind of his day-to-day -day duties of, of being a coach and a head coach, I should say, kind of the CEO of an organization. And, and now I think he feels a lot more comfortable knowing the lay of the land, knows who his personnel is, knows his quarterback's going to be, and allows him to sort of stay ahead of the game now that the, uh, you know, last year, they're just installing everything for the first time. So now they've already got that in, been through a season, been a much more efficient spring. On third down and one, they keep it on the ground again. That should be enough for Jalen Coleman as the blue team will stay out there and that could do it for the first quarter first quarter blew by a 17 drive for the white team offense helped with that oh, you're, you're a jinx too huh <laughs> what are they going to call time out here because i said that no anytime you have a 25 minute first quarter the second quarter is an hour from experience <laughs> And that is it for the first quarter. Clock it at 30 minutes even. And Riley Leonard and company will be back on the field to start the second. Pretty competitive to start blue and white spring game for Duke. 
Blue Devils building on a nine-win season in Mike Elko's first year. 15 minutes in the books in the spring. Welcome back to Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Blue and white spring game for Duke football. Riley Leonard at the controls for the blue team wearing the red jersey. He's not live. I feel like that's not what Riley Leonard was born to do, wear a red jersey. Kevin Johns, their offensive coordinator, said mentally he's like a linebacker. Well, when you've got a quarterback that is uh, this valuable to a team, you put a red jersey on him. You see what he did last year. One of the best dual thread quarterbacks in the entire country. As you see, he's in pretty good company there. Yeah, the only quarterback to run for more touchdowns last year was Bo Nix at Oregon. Oh, he's wide open. And yeah, Leonard throws this time to Malik Bowen Sims again. His third target in the early goings here. Yeah, you mentioned it, Drew. They've got so many wide receivers returning in so much depth there. They feel really good about probably their first five. After that, there's a lot of competition. You see Malik Bowen, Sims, making some plays. He's got some size, 6'2", 190 pounds. And getting an opportunity to play with your starting quarterback in the spring game. Leonard completes. This time it's Samir Hagens, redshirt sophomore out of Philly. That's the other wrinkle of the draft is you got to be celebrating if you're a wide receiver and you get drafted to the same team as the starting quarterback. We're going to talk to the captains later. We're going to get an idea how this draft went, by the way. I cannot wait for that in the second half. If you think the NBA All-Star Game draft gets competitive, <laughs> wait for the blue and white spring game. Leonard to throw on second and two. Floats it complete. The tight end Cole Finney has a first down for the blue team. Finney not really known as the pass catcher in this Duke tight end room. That's really Nicky Dalmolin, but nice grab there. Yeah, really good grab by him. Not a easy play to make. He throws that football off his back foot, throws it a little bit high. Good concentration. And Finney is a large human being, six foot seven. That's a good place to throw it yeah. high, 82. Again, the blue team offense moving it effectively. Jalen Coleman stood up at the line of scrimmage. Trey Freeman in there first on the stop. Freeman's a guy they're excited about. Number 12, the linebacker who started the bowl game win over UCF last year. And Santucci says he's really coming into his own. Yeah, I'd say Santucci comes into a situation where, I mean, this is, this is a, a silver platter. I mean, you've got so much great personnel uh, coach Elko is uh, obviously a defensive head coach coming over from Texas A&M and be fun to watch this defense this season. Leonard with wow. a missile. It's a great throw toward the sticks. Again, it's the tight end Finney. It'll bring up third down and about two. Kind of interesting. When we talked with, with Coach Johns, he said, yeah, Finney's more of the blocker. All right, so everybody's moving back. Surprising. Is there a penalty? I don't see any yellow out there. If this were a real game, that's where Kevin Johns, who's on your screen right now, would be screaming. Yes. What's going on? Well, sometimes you'll see in spring games, they'll put them in different situations on purpose. I got third down and long here. Riley Leonard looking. Sidesteps around the pressure, throws nearly intercepted. Cameron Bergeron had it in his mitts. Yeah, this, this should have been picked off. And obviously, Riley Leonard has all day to throw, probably because he's in a red jersey. You see the defender there, RJ Oben, coming in there. If that were a live play, that would probably be a sack or maybe even a forced fumble, a sack fumble. So here comes the big man, Porter Wilson, 6'5", 233, punter from Fairlawn, Ohio. My neck of the woods. Just down the street, Copley High School. There's a specimen. Yeah, he's a big man. 
Had a really good year last year, too. Averaged over 43 yards per punt. That one skips into the end zone for a touchback for the white team. So there you see Kevin Johns, the offensive coordinator. His counterpart in year one, Tyler Santucci. He'll turn 35 later this year, and he's a Power 5 defensive coordinator. Stony Brook, class of 2010. We had a good conversation with him this week. We did, and, and obviously Mike Elko means a lot to him. And to, to take this opportunity to be a DC here at Duke with all the success they had a season ago, it's, it's pretty exciting, pretty special for the 34-year-old, the as you said. It's a young defensive coordinator. Yeah, his birthday is in May. His defense facing a new quarterback here as Grayson Loftus checks in for the white team. Loftus, the freshman from South Carolina. His first throw is complete. William Robertson out of bounds with a first down for the white team. The senior from Montgomery, Alabama with a catch from Loftus. Grissom Anderson is the running back next to Loftus, and Anderson speeding around the edge, lowering the shoulder. Delivers some punishment for a short game. Plessy Jungu Sungu wore that hit. Jungu Sungu takes the brunt of this hit as he lowers the, the shoulder, brings the boom, and then he actually takes the shot at the end here. And if that were a real game, they may be reviewing that for targeting. Just saying. <laughs> Don't be throwing the T word around. No, it's no, April. it's just, yeah, it's spring. Loftus again completes. Again, it's Robertson. It's a good throw from Loftus. They are excited about his arm. It goes for 12, but he threw that across the field. Yeah, Loftus is a good looking freshman. Has all the ability in the world. Just so young. It should still be in high school. Mm -hmm. Kevin Johns told us he wants to sit in the pocket and rip it. And we saw him do it there. On first down, Loftus, plenty of time. Again, not wearing the red, so they can hit him. And he dives forward a solid gain on first. You know, given the fact that Loftus should still be in high school, Coach John said this has been a lot entering the program and trying to learn everything, but he's handled it great, and we see him getting some action here in the first half. You see this all over college football. I, I can't imagine how difficult it would be to leave early, arrive in January and roll early, trying to get into to, to classes and the rhythm of things, and then, of course, coming right into spring ball, having to learn an offense as a quarterback, very difficult to do. Especially, it's impressive. What's so impressive is, is offense number 26, five yard penalty. It's still second down. It's Robertson on the false yeah. start. What's so impressive is these kids who come in so early and they're already making an impact. Like Peyton Jones, he's going to play this year. And with, all, by the way, with only three quarterbacks on the roster, one of these guys, these backups could end up playing at some point this year too, especially with the way that Leonard plays, takes a lot of hits, runs a lot outside the pocket. Definitely want to have yourself a good backup quarterback and they, they've got a couple competing for that job. There is Jones. Two guys who should still be in high school in the backfield and mm -hmm. Jones with a solid run to move the chains on second down. Jaden Watkins on the stop after a gain of 13. And Loftus kind of delivers uh, sort of a block here on the edge as he gets in the way of a defender oh, yeah. just enough to allow Jones to get outside a little dipsy do yeah quarterbacks throwing blocks in spring games that's not something you see every day yeah I don't know that he wanted to stick his <laughs> stick his head in there I think he just wanted to kind of get his body in front did just enough to help Jones out carry again for Jones this time around the left side Peyton Jones who they're so fired up about gets tripped up by Quentin Algiro the freshman out of Georgia I thought for a moment Jones when he broke outside there was maybe going to get the edge and
take that to the house, but you're right. Good tackle there by uh, Ajiro. On his last two carries, Jones with 19 yards. After he only had two on his first five. Jones was the first running back we saw out there for the white team. Loftus again tucks it and scoots out of bounds a couple yards shy of the first down well, marker. I just feel like you lose your last semester of high school. I mean, that's the best time in school, right? When you already know where you're going. It was funny. You know, we were doing the, um, the pit game last week and they had a couple of players on their roster who are actually going back for prom this week. <laughs> you know, they're in, they're in college. They're playing in a spring game and then they go back for prom as they end their, their senior year of high school while they're in college. How about that? Can you imagine how cool you must feel going into prom? Like, I already play college football. Yeah, imagine if you have an NIL deal, too. Oh, <laughs> must be nice. Third down and three. Jones again twisted down. No gain. No. So it'll bring up fourth down. Now, decision time. Oh, you got to go for this. This is a spring game. Give Loft Loftus a chance to throw the football in fourth and three. Oh, there is no wind. It's, oh, it's a nice, a serene night. Uh, and if you're wondering why we're doing this game at night, the weather tomorrow is going to be horrific. Yes. And you want to get guys out of this game healthy, so it's a perfect night tonight, about 78 degrees. You're right, not a, not a breeze in the air. Good turnout, too, here at Wallace Wade. So they're going for it. Grayson Loftus, the freshman out there. They were 14 of 25 on fourth down last year, and this time it will fall incomplete. Nice grab by the orange shirt over there trying to connect with Peyton Jones. So a fourth down stop for the blue team defense. That is a beautiful night for football here at Wallace Wade Stadium. Spring game rolls on as the blue team led by Riley Leonard on top by four. Ooh, very good dogs. Ups in the house. Admission was free for the spring game. Like you mentioned, Dustin, a late switch to the schedule. This was supposed to be tomorrow afternoon, Saturday, due to whether they're playing it Friday night. Good to see some folks still in the house here at Wallace Wade. Yeah, what a great night for football. Because like you, like you said, the weather tomorrow, they're, they're saying right around 1 o'clock when they were supposed to kick off, weather's going to be like 100% chance of thunderstorms. It's not great. Yeah. And they do play on a natural grass surface, so that you can imagine how bad the footing would be tomorrow. After the five-yard carry for Jordan Waters, they try to throw it to him. Leonard does, and it's batted down by Desmond Alduge. Alduge, the freshman out of Milford, Delaware, makes it third down and five. And these teams were drafted. Dwayne Carter was part of the drafting process for Team White. Carter out tonight. No major injuries for the Duke roster, though. Waters this time catches it out of the backfield, and Waters goes airborne in the spring game across midfield. George Wright on the tackle, avoided getting posterized there by the running back. If I'm Coach Elko, I, I immediately go over to Waters and say, don't do that again. <laughs> At least not in an exhibition scrimmage. Let's save that for uh, when we're in ACC play. Oh, it always makes me nervous when guys leave their feet. Anyone ever tried to do that to you, Dustin? Uh, I've been hurdled before, yes. The answer is yes. And I'll never forget it. It was an exhibition game. We're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh, and I was hurdled. It's pretty embarrassing. Who hurled you? Don't say like Jerome Bettis. I don't remember. <laughs> That's probably good. No, it was like in the fourth quarter, and uh, I'm not even sure if that guy made the roster, but he jumped over me. You and your 43 and a half inch vertical. I can't believe it. <laughs> trying to say something? <laughs> Second down and two for Riley Leonard and the Duke blue team offense. It's Waters again. Barrels through for a first down. Luke Murgo and memorable factor in there on the tackle. Yes, 
Memorable factor. You have been waiting on the all way day team. for this. He's gonna keep saying it. Memorable factor. His brother, forgettable nothing, plays for North Carolina. Just kidding. No memorable factor. That is his real name. Sophomore out of London. Went to Eton College. A completion to Vance Bulliard. And he drags defenders into the red zone. George Wright, the first one there again for Duke. And there is a memorable factor. This guy's a great athlete. Great at rugby, great at rowing, and now a linebacker for the Blue Devils. Yeah, big kid. You, you mentioned it. Went to Eaton College. This kid must be a genius. Yeah, Eaton is probably the most prestigious boarding school in the world. Not an overstatement. Leonard on the toss, complete on the slant. And we've got a flag on the field near side, about the 15-yard line on the opposite sideline from where that catch was made by Nick Leonard. An eligible receiver downfield, offense number 73. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Jake Hornibrook, the Stanford transfer. Number 73 wearing the black jerseys. The offensive linemen interchangeable in this blue and white spring game. That's why they're wearing the black. Yeah, just that's just a depth issue. And you, you want to play both guy or both offensive lines on both squads. And certainly you, you want as much as you can to have Riley Leonard behind his starting offensive line. First and 15, another completion for Leonard. That's Makai Wall, redshirt freshman out of Greensboro, picks up seven. You mentioned the offensive line, Dustin. That's really the one spot where there isn't a whole lot of continuity. You know, Bill Conley over on ESPN.com has his returning production metric, and mm -hmm. Duke on offense was ninth in the country coming into this year. Pretty much everyone who carried the ball or caught the ball last year is back, but they do lose three starters up front. Under two to play in the second quarter now. And Leonard. that'll be a sack. Yeah, Leonard with the red jersey. Blow that whistle. So a sack on second down. Give it to Aeneas Peebles. Peebles, he's had himself a impressive spring. They were talking about these X plays. Explosive defensive plays. And Peebles actually led the entire defense this spring and has really sort of made a name for himself. Yeah, he's competing for playing time on that crowded defensive line. A lot of returning talent for the Blue Devils. Leonard floats it up the sideline toward the end zone, incomplete, but a flag comes in. Two of them. Everyone throwing the yellow. Nick Lampert was the intended target, Dylan Merrill in the coverage for Duke. Yeah, Leonard spotted the man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and once he saw that safety move away, he knew he had an opportunity to take a shot to the end zone, and, and obviously the contact was there as the football was thrown pretty well. It, it could have easily been a touchdown. Pass interference. Defense number 28. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. All day to throw, look at the touch. A little behind Lampert. But again, if you don't get your head around and you've got the contact when the football comes, that's gonna get called every single time. So it's first and goal for Leonard and the blue team. Into coverage again, and a nice defensive play made by Cameron Bergeron. He was trying to connect with Makai Wall. Nice little combo route with man coverage as you try to throw that basically to the back pylon. And that's how you play the football from a defeated position by Bergeron. You, you follow the football through the eyes of the wide receiver and you break it out the last second. Great job. Cameron Bergeron playing that nickelback position along with Brandon Johnson, one of their better defensive players. On second and goal. 
They keep it on the ground, shedding a tackle. Coleman is wrangled down around the two or three yard line. Under a minute to play in this second quarter. Desmond Aladuge on the tackle there for the white team defense. The 11th play of this drive coming up for the blue team. Maybe I didn't jinx you. This has been a very fast say, first half. About to say, you want to apologize? Yes. Excuse me of the jinx? Excuse me. Get this in in under an hour with a normal clock. On third down and goal, Leonard throws the fade caught by Lampert. The junior from Miami high points it. The second passing touchdown for Riley Leonard. And the blue team offense extends the lead. Riley Leonard connects with number four, Nick Lampert. You'll see this, Hirsch is in coverage. That's just great concentration. Number 29, Todd Polino on to attempt the point after. Drive goes 11 plays, 70 yards in five minutes and 33 seconds. Todd Polino tacks on the extra point before they can even get the net up behind the uprights, and it's 14-3 blue team. Watch Lampert go to the corner of the end zone, and they're working on this route combination, and he just gets a beautiful throw by Riley Leonard. Just look at the touch on that. That's that beautiful. Nothing the defender could do in that situation. Leonard, two touchdowns already in the first half. I know coach said that they may play him a little bit in the second half too, but I, I think you've seen plenty to feel good about this spring for Riley Leonard. Same thing we gonna learned. Going to be one of the top ball. top 10 quarterbacks in the country coming up. I like year. that. Yeah. I like that. I don't think that's a bold prediction. Well, look, here's the thing. Duke's schedule is really tough, and they open with an amazing opportunity against Clemson on Labor Day. If they do what a lot of people around this program think they're capable of doing in that game, all of a sudden you're looking at that face, Riley Leonard, getting a lot of buzz. You know, a lot of people, maybe including Mike Elko, would look at that, that opener and, and say, man, how do we get stuck with Clemson in the opener? But I think it's a great opportunity. For everything they accomplished last year to be able to go play Clemson in the opener, that could really set the tone for the season. I think Clemson played in that slot last year, too, didn't they? The Monday of the opening weekend against Georgia Tech. I believe you're right about it. Yeah, you are right about it. It's a close game for a majority of yeah. them. Yeah. You played Notre Dame at Florida State at North Carolina. I mean, that's a, that's a brutal schedule. At FSU, too. We were talking about returning production earlier. Yeah. They have the most of any team in the country. How good do you think Florida State's going to be this year, Dustin? They surprised a lot of people last year. Uh, I think they'll be they'll be in the mix for the ACC. And remember, this year the, the the conference changes, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see how this new schedule shakes out. You know, who's, who ends up playing for that conference title? Yeah, each team in the ACC has got the three rivals, yep. and then they rotate the other five through the schedule. Interestingly, Duke, all three of their rivals oh, in-state opponents: oh, Carolina, oh. NC State, Wake Forest. The only team in North Carolina that got all three of those in-state foes. This one will be returned by Edwin Barnes. Again, the kickoff returns are thud. This is still live. Barnes still going, and they finally blow the whistle. They'll bring it back to the 30-yard line. So the white offense, whether it's Henry Bielen or Grayson Loftus, with 53 seconds left, will take over. Going to be Beelan getting another series here in this final drive of the first half, most likely, and we'll see if the they can put together a little two-minute drive. Yeah, on Beelan's first drive, they went 17 plays and ultimately settled for that field goal. Play clock's already under five as the redshirt freshman from Cardinal Hayes in New York takes the snap. And he completes. Left side, it's Jordan Moore. Moore still on his feet. You see the athleticism that basically convinced them to keep him on the field no matter what position he was playing. It's a gain of 10 or 11, and they will move the chains. Yeah, terrific athleticism, and also very smart to know 
where the sideline's at to be able to get out of bounds as well. Playing with a live clock in the first half. Beelin hounded. The quarterback sandwiched. Yeah, it looks like the white team will call timeout. I got to imagine it's a little difficult playing quarterback for the white team because your offensive linemen are all wearing black jerseys and you're playing against blue. So when you drop back in the pocket, you're seeing a lot of dark jerseys, whether they're your, your, uh, your teammates or the defenders. Wesley Williams and Jamie on Franklin. We get credit for the sack there of Beelin. And we will take a media timeout. So Team White used their first timeout here in the first half. And we will step aside. Yeah. All right, so following the media timeout, the Duke white team in this spring game scrimmage has 35 seconds left in this first half. Henry Bielen at the controls with Riley Leonard on the other side. Captains drafted the blue and white teams. Riley Leonard the first pick, of course, and then Bielen and Loftus. The other two quarterbacks on the roster end up wearing white jerseys. Four wide for Bielen as the redshirt freshman looks, throws incomplete. A little tall for his intended target, the six foot four tight end, Nikki Dalmolin. Dorian Mausi applied the pressure. Number eight in blue, the senior out of Detroit. Defensive coordinator Tyler Santucci fired up about Mausi. Told us he's coming off foot surgery, so he's only practiced the last third of the spring. But he's an elite communicator, gets everyone on the same page. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 30 seconds left in the second. Bielin feels the heat, throws the screen. Broken tackle for Eli Pankel. And Pankel takes it inside the 40 with a first down on third and 12. It's a gain of 22 for the grad student from Indiana. James Hobson finally made the stop. That's another first down. Broken tackle from Al Blades Jr., the Miami transfer. Eli Pankel, who's so explosive playing that X position in this Duke offense with a big pop. Let's go, Duke. Let's go, Duke. Let's go, Duke. It's the longest play of the game so far. Sets up first down and 10. Beelin hit as he throws, and the pass flutters incomplete. Wesley Williams brought the heat that time and hit the arm of Beelan, who backed up Riley Leonard all of last season after Jordan Moore moved to wide receiver. Got a lot of reps with the ones and twos, but not a whole lot of game experience. But they are excited about what this youngster can bring. He's got five wide on second down and 10. Beelan surveys, completes. That's the tight end, Dal Molin. And he's chopped down in a hurry by Jungu Sungu. And Team White with two more timeouts will take one. And the ball's at the 37 or 38 yard line. The kicker for the white team is Charlie Ham, whose career long is 45. And yes, you are watching the Duke spring game, not the Tennessee spring game, although that might be misleading with the color on the right side of your screen. Maybe one last chance for the white team. They'll keep it on the ground with the freshman Peyton Jones. They've got one more timeout as they cross the sticks with a first down, and they will use it and bring out the field goal unit. So they'll bring out Charlie Ham, who converted from 23 earlier in this first half. Number 
44, Charlie Hamm. On to attempt. Hamm, the grad student from Atlanta. Field goal for White. This will be about 39 yards for Ham. Like that about 47. Short changed him a little bit. Charlie Ham. This would be his career long in a real game. And Ham sticks it. Right between the eyes, Charlie Ham. 47 yards for Charlie Ham. So Ham's got all six for the white team. Riley Leonard is thrown for two touchdowns on the other side. And the Duke Spring football game has reached. Recess. A couple of touchdowns through the air for Leonard and Blue. And the Blue Devils got to be feeling good about their QB1. A good competitive blue and white game after 30 minutes. Halftime at the Duke Spring Game where Duke leads 14 to 6. Blue Devils on top of the Blue Devils. More second half action coming up from Wallace Wade Stadium right after this. Back here at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham on the campus of Duke University where the blue team leads the white team 14 to six in the Duke spring game. With Dustin Fox, I'm Drew Carter and Foxy more the same from Riley Leonard. What we saw last season, he was one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC. He's looked the same tonight. Yeah, what an amazing first half for him. Pretty much perfect. 13 for 18 and a couple touchdowns. We'll take a look back at a couple of these beautiful throws. So Leonard likes the back corner of the end zone. Two touchdown passes in that first half. And we don't know really how much we'll see him here in the second half. Like I said before the uh, first half ended, I think you saw plenty to feel really good about Riley Leonard heading into the fall. Yeah, his two touchdowns were to Jalen Calhoun and Nick Lampert. Leonard, the only guy in that red jersey tonight, the two quarterbacks on the white team, Henry Bielin and Grayson Loftus, are in the white jerseys, and Bielin will take over. Now, this doesn't mean Riley Leonard's night is over. Leonard's playing on the blue team. He was the first pick in the draft for this spring game, and Bielin's been at the helm for the majority of the time for the white team. Bielan 7 of 13 for 72 yards in that first half. Freshman to freshman, they fake the handoff to Peyton Jones, and Bielan on the keeper, he's got some wheels, strides all the way to midfield. No, that was a great decision by Bielan to keep the football, and he's just, I mean, this thing just parts like crazy. He's got a convoy of blockers to do a terrific job there on the outside. That's a big gainer. Bielan showing off some wheels. Bielan made a B line for 28 yards. Nothing. Straight face. No response. Yeah, it was average. <laughs> we'll be here all week. For for your sake, you got to hope it's a running clock, so I can't get many more of those off. No, get in get in as many as you can. This time, Beelan gives to Jones. Jones sheds a tackle, sprints around the right side, and brought down by the horse collar, which yeah. draws a couple of flags. Michael yeah. Reese will be guilty here. Personal foul, horse call attack, defense number 59. That 15 yard penalty is added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. And this is the one thing you got to worry about when you're doing live tackling in the spring game. You got a kid like Peyton Jones who's so talented, and that's a dangerous tackle. So eight yards on the run, tack on 15 more on the penalty. And the clock is frozen at 14.09, so we expected a running clock in the second half. But things can change on the fly here. Duke's playing Duke. This is the Mike Elko show, and uh, he makes the decisions on the rules here in the second half. Again, it's Jones, and we see that vision and natural mm -hmm. feel that Coach Johns was telling us about. Yeah, even right there, I mean, that didn't even seem like it was going to go anywhere. And all of a sudden, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, picks up a couple of yards. Great vision, as you said. Got the ability to kind of stick that foot in the ground, make that one cut, and has excellent instincts as well. Yeah, you said it earlier, what Kevin John said. He makes cuts when we don't even tell him to. He just yeah. feels it a lot like Jacquez Moore in that respect. A 
11 carries for 48 yards for Peyton Jones. On second down, they go right back to him. And Jones feels it again, just tripped up. It's the second time tonight he's been so close to breaking free, but James Hobson makes the stop. Yeah, you go back and look what, what Peyton Jones did in high school there in Norfolk, Virginia. For 34 touchdowns, over 3,200 yards. And just a, just a kid, man. 18 years old, coming in here, having an opportunity to compete for the, for at least sort of a role in the running back room, right? I mean, th there's three guys probably ahead of him, upperclassmen, but he's made a name for himself here so far this spring. Here's third down for Beelin and the white team offense. Again, it's Jones. It's ridden down from behind by Michael Reese. Ball's at the 21 as it sets up fourth down and say four. And the offense is staying out there. I do something here where you get Beelin outside the pocket, give him an option to either take off and run himself or hit something past the sticks. You only got to get four yards. They spread him out on fourth and four. Beelin rushed from the pocket. Beelin throws, complete! What a grab by Eli Pankel for the first down near the 10-yard line. They haven't called his name too much so far tonight, but this is, this is a guy that comes back at 6'3", 205. One of the go-to targets in the red zone. Just had 23 catches a season ago, but boy, he has some ability. I don't know how he double caught that. That looked like it was going to bounce way over his head out of his paws. Secures it, first down. It's a good thing he is 6'3". No doubt. Range there. Beelin keeps and throws just out of the reach of Jordan Moore. A flag comes in at the two. Oh, this was just a miss by Henry Beelin. He had Jontavius Robertson cutting out to the flat. Both holding, defenders holding. bite Deep on the three. slant where he the throws the football to. to the goal. Automatic first down. Robertson was wide open. He'd have walked into the end zone. You'll see these two defenders up top. They take the slant. And he, <laughs> number one was wide open to the left. Well, that's why you play these. Yeah. They'll see it on tape. It is first down again, though, after the penalty. And it's Peyton Jones. Jones dancing, and the freshman stood up inside the two. Peyton Jones coming in again. Should be in high school right now. He's been mm -hmm. an awesome surprise for this coaching staff. And if you're a Duke fan, you might be thinking, hey, that's great. We don't need any more running backs. Jalen Coleman, Jordan Waters, and Jacquez Moore are all back. But it sounds like they want to keep this freshman involved. Back in the shotgun on second and goal from the two. They go back to Jones, burrowing and tunneling, looking for the goal line. And his first touchdown in a Duke uniform, he comes up about a foot short. Yeah, this will be third and about half a yard. Just give it to number 10 again. Blood on the forearm there. Putting in a little work today. This ain't no exhibition. <laughs> Not for Peyton Jones. He's competing for some, some playing time. Will they go right back to the freshman on third down and goal? You bet your you know what they will. It's Jones right up the gut. And he is in for the touchdown. touchdown the first touchdown for Peyton Jones in a Duke uniform. Will it be the first of many for this standout freshman from Norfolk? Double team inside on Franklin and then right there behind the left guard. Great push on Reese by Parker. Jones is in.
A touchdown go drive goes nine plays, 78 yards, five minutes, and 11 seconds. And Charlie Ham adds the extra point. Eight of those nine plays on the ground, and Peyton Jones carrying the mail. We've got cotton candy here at Wallace Wade Stadium. Beautiful. Well, according to Bill Connolly of ESPN.com, Duke brings back the fourth most returning production in the ACC. On the offensive side of the ball, they're top 10 in the country in returning production. And they've got some leadership back as well from last year's nine-win team. Graham Barton and Dwayne Carter not suited up tonight, but they are kind enough to join us on the headsets on the field. Hey, guys, you got us? Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Yeah, all good. Got you. All right, so Graham and Dwayne were part of the drafts. <laughs> To put these teams together, Dwayne, I want to start with you. You were part of the reason this white team got assembled the way it did. How do you like being a GM? You know, uh, I feel like we were built for it. Uh, we were made, you know, we got a smart front office and Coach Elko and all the Chad and Clender and all those guys up there. So we we're kind of programmed for it. I think I think the draft went well. Graham, you, you got the number one pick, right, with Riley Leonard. That, yeah. That's a no-brainer, right? Yeah, that was a no-brainer. <laughs> uh, I like his performance so far. Let a few <laughs> yeah. drives down the field. Yeah, uh, th this young guy, I'd say taking a chance on him, that, that's paid off so far well, for your team. Absolutely. And, and, and you, you guys in the blue squad there, your quarterback can't get touched. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Dwayne, it's a dream Dwayne's situation. at a bit of a disadvantage here. Yeah, it's a dream situation for us. <laughs> All right, so here is Riley Leonard wearing the right jersey. Guys, I said earlier, if I'm wearing that different color jersey, I'm taking off every time. Absolutely. I'm, I'm padding the stats. Uh, yeah. Graham, what did you tell Riley and your team before this game to get them fired up? Uh, you know, I, I just told them that they're on the blue team for a reason. You know, we're a gritty group. Uh, they all like to compete. Um, they were all worthy of being on the blue team. I think they're showing that so far. We're going to try to close out this game here and uh, <laughs> score a few more touchdowns. Let's ask both of you guys, just what, what has spring been like this this season? Year two with Coach Elko. Last year was a little different. You know, everybody trying to feel each other out. Now, after your terrific nine and four season a year ago how much different has it been this spring yeah so i'd say uh, the main difference is last year you know new staff knew everything kind of was learning what we're going to do right yeah but now it's like how we do everything right so we already have our standards set the bar is set for what we do for excellence right so now it's like how do we practice how do we live how do we carry ourselves on campus just from that aspect so right. it's transitioned from what to how and honestly it's been very well so far yeah i agree i think um you know there's an upgraded amount of expectations. Um, there's a greater level uh, of expectations to be consistent. Um, I think we're uh, relying heavy on our leaders, and I think that'll take us as far as we want to go. 100%. Well, last year, the motivation was easy to find, right? Pick to finish last in the division. Team had lost nine games in back-to-back -back years. This year, there's a little bit of hype. You know, we're in the house talking about how great last season was. Where does the motivation come from this year, Graham? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts It starts over. You know, you kind of, as great as last season was, you've got to start from uh, day one again and uh, start back all over. So kind of try to forget about last year and move on and just focus about this year and this team. Um, you know, we've got a great schedule ahead of us, and I think this team is prepared for that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I echo those same sentiments as well as I think what makes us special here at Duke is our culture, right? And where our chip on our shoulder comes from, I mean, you can look at the outside stuff. You can look at all the projections and everything. But at the end of the day, we focus about us. And I think Coach Elko does a great job of preaching that message day in and day out. And you can never be satisfied. But, of course, we're going to game plan for our opponents. But at the end of the day, we control what we can control and play to our best of our ability every day. Dwayne, this was for you. Being on the defense and now having a new defensive coordinator come in here in, in Coach Santucci, for your your final senior year what's what's that transition been like from from coach smith now to coach santucci yeah so coach smith also another great coach very good to have him obviously we we're very successful underneath him as well and coach two kind of came in and it was honestly we didn't skip a beat coach two she came in kind of fit around with the guys uh, he refers to me as pappy because i'm the old guy <laughs> so, you know he kind of kind of uh broke the ice a little bit with that one and once that happened he kind of we all embraced him and then we're just rolling well, speaking of age, Dwayne, who's older, you think, Tyler Santucci or Miles Jones, <laughs> the seventh-year cornerback <laughs> from Texas A&M? Um, I, I, think, I think Miles might be older. I'm not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> yeah. But he's got that. He's got the Pappy nickname, right? Not you. I mean, listen, they they all just assume that I'm like a seventh year senior. <laughs> I get my degree here in about two weeks, three weeks, whatever. So I'm on track. Like I'm not any older than the fourth year. The next year be my fifth year. But yeah, it's pretty funny. So since you guys are the veterans of this team, you got some new guys in the new faces on the team, transfers, you got some freshmen who've arrived early. 
Give us a name or two of, of a player that you think is stand out or has stood out so far this spring. Yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, mid-year wise, Peyton Jones, one yeah. of our running backs, has been phenomenal yeah. so far. Um, just, you know, getting him in the room of already, um, you know, studs in the running back room. I think he'll have every opportunity uh, he wants to contribute this fall. Uh, as far as transfer goes, I think Jay Cornerbrook, um, tackle from Stanford, has been doing awesome, really um, bought into our culture um, up front. And I think all three of those uh, new offensive linemen have been huge to our success so far this spring, and I think they'll be huge to our success in the fall. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I, I say since he kind of covered, you know, the transfers and the freshmen, I'll go uh, kind of younger guys. So I say Wes Williams and Aaron Hall, two D tackles, kind of made a switch from DN to D tackle this year and fully embraced the role, and they've done nothing but take it and run with it. I mean, they've been a sponge in the meeting room, sponge on the practice field, and they, they just excel and they put in the work and they're showing. Graham, one of the things Coach Johns was telling us this week is, is that all the offensive linemen are kind of training at every position, trying to learn every position. How, how's that been in practice? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've spoken to this before. Uh, Coach Cushing does a phenomenal job. We had kind of some injury uh, bug last year, and we had to move guys um, from completely different spots in the fall. And I think Coach Cushing just does a great job of getting guys work at every spot. He's done that since the day he's gotten here. Um, and I just think that goes such a long way for us in the fall, being able to move guys around. Um, guys are comfortable at different positions. And I think doing that in the spring, um, yeah, like I said, goes a long way in the fall. Uh, Dwayne, this one's for you. You're the first three-time captain in Duke program history. What does that mean to you, and why do you think you're the right guy to make history like that? Yeah, so honestly, it means the world that my teammates think this highly of me, uh, developed me for the past few years to be a captain. And honestly, like, when it comes to, like, me thinking I'm the right guy, I think it's more of, like, a reflection of the work and that we put together as a unit, right? Because I remember coming in, uh, I said to myself when I first got to Duke, I was going to take every day, work as hard as I can, and learn as much as I can. And I've kind of embodied that role. So it's just a blessing to think that my teammates really think of me that highly. And it's not necessarily, like, why I think I'm best fit. I think it's just a blessing to be considered by my teammates and a captain. And you're really good at drafting. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Helps. Thank you. Thank you. That helps. Hey, guys, before we let you go, we were talking about the schedule earlier and how you've got a marquee opportunity in your first game of the season. On a Monday night, Labor Day, you get Clemson coming in here. What do you think that's going to be like here at Wallace Wade Stadium? Yeah, I mean, having a great brand like Clemson come in will be awesome. Um, you know, we'll be ready to go. Um, we've been working all offseason, and, and that will continue. Um, but it will be great for this program, um, for that game on Labor Day weekend. And, yeah, I mean, I'm, we're excited, and it should be a fun one. Yeah, 100%. Hopefully Wally Wade will be racking, or rocking, excuse me. 100% attendance and some. Hopefully they bring some bleachers back here, kind of in the open part. <laughs> but we're just excited, man. I mean, we're excited to go. Uh, a lot of hype is around the team, like you said. So the buzz on campus has really been real this year. Um, guys coming up, excited to play, excited to attend the game. So we just can't wait to go September 4th. Hey, last one for me, fellas. The ACC changes up. Uh, no divisions this year. What do you guys think about that? I'm, I think it's great for the conference um, just to be able to get teams to play everybody. Um, so I think you know what's great for the conference is great for us and so yeah i'm on board with it yeah 100 percent. i mean i agree i echo the same sentiments as well as it's just fun to play different teams every you know like the coastal and what's the what's the other one atlantic yeah. coastal and atlantic <laughs> uh, like, excuse me like you know I don't you worry about it yeah, I you already forgot him focus. of course <laughs> i already forgot him there you go but it's just fun to play new opponents like we get to play state down the road who we never ever i think we played what one time so your freshman, we play, yeah, we yeah. play state one time since I've been here. You got to go back down to Florida State. Like, it's just fun to play different opponents, and they're all competitive. ACC is very competitive. And you guys have the entire research rhombus covered. You got Carolina, NC State, and Wake Forest yeah. as your rivals going forward. Yeah. So, hey, guys, congratulations on an amazing season last year. Thanks for doing this, and uh, best of luck the rest of the way. Appreciate yeah, it, guys. Thank you, guys. That's Graham Barton and Dwayne Carter. Barton in the blue jersey, Carter in the white jersey partially responsible for drafting these teams tonight. And they've done a nice job. We got ourselves a competitive game here, Fox. We do. I, I would have said that uh, the blue team with, with Riley Leonard probably were favorites coming into this one. And, uh, boy, Beelan and, and the white team have really kind of put on a clinic here coming back. They got third down and 10 here, and Beelan throws a seed across got the it. ashes, and that is a first down. Duke is John Tavis Robertson moves the chains. Got just enough. Very difficult throw to the far sideline. Knows he's going to get hit. 
and somehow just gets past the sticks and keeps the drive alive. The white team is 7 of 10 on third down tonight. Robertson there fired up about him as well. Kevin Johns called him one of the most athletic guys we've got in the wide receiver room. They're going to move him all over the place. Beelan rolling on the keeper. Ducks out of bounds across midfield. Solid gain on first. Henry Beelan on the keeper around the right side. Pulls out of bounds by number seven, Al Blaze. Correction, number 97, Wesley Williams. Gain of nine, second and one. Henry Bielen tonight, 10 of 19 for a buck 10, running six carries for 64 yards. Duke's got some mobile quarterbacks. Last year, Riley Leonard ran for 13 touchdowns. Bielen with time. Will we see the wheels again? We will. First down for the white team inside the 40. Going down on the sideline, Michael Reese appears to be all right. We had a little news in college football today. New rule change coming up for the upcoming season that passed. The clock will not stop on first downs in college football. Except for the last two minutes. Last two of minutes half. of each yeah. half, yeah. What do you think? Love it. Love it. Games are too long. I mean, we're in TV, so we're just going to say that, but yeah. No, I, too long. I just mean from a standpoint, like, you want to, on a Saturday, I want to watch as many games as I can. Totally. And four hours is a, is a long time to be. Uh, be watching the games. You see the, the rule changes, Division One and Two. I mean, these are really focused on shortening the games and well, making them move faster. You saw what has happened in baseball. They've cut games down like 25 to 30 minutes it's great. per game on average, which and that's been fantastic to watch so far this season. I think it's going to be great for college football. Yeah, and a big reason why they're doing this as well, it limits the number of plays, which limits the number of exposures to contact yep. and potential injuries. You know, an average FBS game averages close to three hours and 30 minutes. Compare that to the NFL, it's about three hours, 10 minutes, and that can make a big difference. Five on the timer for Beelin. And the white team offense. Hand off to Peyton Jones. It'll bring up third down and long. By the way, do you like the pitch clock in Major League Baseball? Love it. Big Guardians fan. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been good. A couple guys have had some issues with it. No names. Karen Check in Cleveland. But, you know, most guys have adapted pretty well. And check out Dwayne Carter signing some autographs. Fans got those bleed blue hats when sweet. they came in. It'll go nicely with that Patrick Mahomes jersey. Mm-hmm. Going to get a Daniel Jones jersey if you're at the Duke spring game. Maybe he can buy us all one. I think so. <laughs> Making 40 mil a year. Yeah. Beal in with the fadeaway throw on the screen pass. They set it up for Pankel. And Pankel dragging blue jerseys across the first down marker. This was third down and nine, and Pankel carried guys for about 10 of those 12 yards he gained. This was just a very physical run, and it was difficult to tell who was actually blocking for him because all the offensive line, the black jerseys coming in there, pushing from behind, but just a terrific effort to pick up that first down. Brings them inside the 30. Beelin surveys. Now rolls and Smart. fires it, just ices it out of bounds. Pressure applied by Samaj Turner, freshman from Winston-Salem. Dustin, are there any other big rule changes you'd like to see in college football? And I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, you definitely put me on the spot. Yeah. Did not prep you. No. You're a company man. I like to see that. You did mention I, targeting Yeah, earlier. I was just thinking about targeting a little bit because I, I, I don't like players who are, are ejected to have to miss the next game. I, I hate that. Look out. A nice grab by Jordan Moore, immediately taken down by Jungu yeah, Sungu. Eight, Jordan Moore. 
Maybe a tick early. That's a good tackle right there. I knew you'd say Right that. on time. I knew you'd say that. He's had a nice the, game. The defensive back in me. Yeah, he has. He's been in on a lot of plays. Could be the final play of the third quarter. Beelin complete. William Robertson across the 25 and near the red zone. It was third down and 13. James Hobson with the tackle. Bring up fourth down and about three or four. As we go to the fourth quarter. The Duke spring game pretty competitive. Welcome back. The white team attempting a field goal to take the lead, and it hooks wide from Charlie Ham, who was perfect tonight until that. Ham misses. And the blue team will take back over, leading by one. So the question is, is Riley Leonard done for the day? I think so. Grayson Loftus is put on the red jersey, and as the blue team huddles, Leonard lifts the helmet up. He was outstanding tonight, as expected. 14 of 19 for a buck 22 and two touchdowns. Leonard also four carries, lost seven yards net. But we know he's a phenomenal running quarterback when he's not wearing the red jersey. And the clock was running. Now it's 14.35. I did jinx it ultimately, Dustin. Oh, no. You never, never would do that. <laughs> Grayson Loftus throws on the Oof. run. That's a bullet looking for Makai Wall. Good coverage from Cameron Burton. Number 4, Cameron Burton in coverage. Loftus had an impressive high school career. There at Gaffney, in South Carolina. 7,000 yards passing in his career. Completes here to number seven, Jordan Waters. A nice move up the sideline. 7,000 yards, that's a lot of yards. Yeah. 55 touchdowns, too. Wonder if he's going to prom. That's a good question. I'd say I'd be going back to prom. You're the starting quarterback? You throw for 7,000 in high school? Yeah. I'm going back to prom. You're going back to prom. <laughs> they might as well put a, <laughs> the, 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 the crown on him. That's right. Make him the prom king. Loftus on third down and four. Oh, he's got a man deep. Did not whip it. Flag comes in behind the play. At the far hash marks. For now, Loft is about a yard short as he stepped out of bounds. Third down. Third down. It's Matt Islander. You know a spring game is big, Dustin, when we have two referees. Well, they got to get their work in, too. That's right. You know, it's a practice session for everybody. Riley Leonard, he's gotten plenty of practice tonight. He is who we thought he was. Loftus fires complete first down. Blue team moves the sticks. Fans Bullyard, the tight end. Another freshman. Making a bit of an impact here in the spring game. Now they really want more depth from the tight end position. They felt like they had two strong candidates for that, that role. They don't play a lot of 12 personnel, but mostly 11 personnel, which is one tight end. Obviously, with all those running backs, you could see them getting a little bit more in those run-heavy formations that they can get some of those tight ends to step up. 
That one went for 18. And on first down, back on the ground with Jordan Waters. So we're getting a good look here at, at Grayson Loftus. Riley Leonard, their starting quarterback. One of just three quarterbacks on the roster. And we talked with Kevin Johns about, you know, the balance between wanting to protect your franchise quarterback and Riley Leonard, but also letting Riley be Riley. He ran for 13 touchdowns last year. I was, I'm sorry, I thought it was fascinating when, yeah. when Coach Johns was talking about, and in, in Coach Elko, how they just had to teach him to, to learn to slide even. Right. To learn to play the quarterback position, to make these decisions. And, and certainly, uh, he's taken a little less hits. Uh, as he's uh, gotten more experience at, at playing quarterback. That's a sack for R.J. Oban. But Leonard, he's a great athlete. Yeah, he's oh a, yeah. an all-state type basketball player at Fairhope High School in the Mobile area in Alabama. You know, there's actually a, an April Fool's post on the Duke men's basketball Instagram saying that Riley Leonard would be suiting up for them next year. It's not true, though. That'd be kind of cool. It would be fun. I'd love to see it. I think he was a great high school basketball player. I don't know if he's quite at that level, though. You know, his father played hoops in college, the, Cit the Citadel. Loftus again. They'll whistle that dead. Wearing the red jersey, another sack. Somebody buy a lunch today, RJ! You, know, you wonder Somebody how much you think Riley Leonard will run this year. Because you've got all the receivers back. The offense can be completely wide open, and with all those running backs, I don't know that you necessarily will need the type of, of scrambling ability that he has like he did last year. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, I think once the whistle blows and you're between the lines, you feel like it's going to be hard to stop him. That's, that's what Johns was saying, because mentally he's built like a linebacker. Hard to pull him back once the game starts. Jordan Moore calls for the fair Great catch. Moore, fair catch. I, think, I think we got to see a, a little bit of a, a teaser for what we'll see in the fall when it comes to Riley Leonard. He's been terrific tonight. Welcome back to Durham, North Carolina, where the blue team leads the Duke spring game. 14-13 running clock midway through the fourth. Third down. Holding penalty declined by the blue team defense as the clock continues to wind. So the blue team on top by one here. They had the first pick in the draft for this spring game. They took Riley Leonard. So as you might expect, they're winning. But white team driving here. Yeah. To take the lead. Yeah, opportunity here maybe for a walk-off field goal. Grayson Loftus pats it, throws it on the run, completes it for a gain of eight. Kate Anders on the catch that time, the tight end. And now we're joined by Riley Leonard. Riley, you were making it rain in the blue and white game tonight. How'd you feel out there? Yeah, it felt great to get back out there with the guys. Um, you know, having J5 on my side is, you know, makes it pretty easy for me. So it was great to get out there. What's with those back corner end zone throws you, you guys are working on tonight? You were pretty efficient with those. I like that. Yeah, we practice those all the time. Every single day, we probably throw, the, throw that 10 times a day. So, Riley, oh my God. He gets off just to Apollo's cook. All right. I think. I think you got to jump? You got to go, go. Yeah. Go back in. All right. Go get him. Go get him. White team is taking the lead. So Riley Leonard is going to suit back up and try to pull Blue back in front. That's a 49-yard bomb from Loftus to Cook. Timing's everything, right? <laughs> what a great throw. Beats his man on the outside, and that's a beautiful deep ball thrown by Grayson Loftus. Walker in coverage. That yeah. deep ball, beautiful up in the air like Apollos 89. And it was good awareness by Loftus, too. He saw on the outside Walker was beat off the line of scrimmage and man coverage. And as soon as he saw that, he just put the perfect amount of loft on the football, dropped it right in the bucket. White lines up going for two. So the white team lines up to go for two to make this a seven-point lead. Grissom Anderson, the running back, as Loftus throws toward the corner incomplete. 
It was Edwin Barnes, the intended target. And it's a five-point lead for White. So it sounds like, I mean, these teams really want to win. Well, you saw the the um, the energy there from Riley Leonard. We were doing the interview. We got one question in, two questions in, and he sees the touchdown throw, and he's like, I'm going back in the game. Yeah. Ditch that headset with alacrity. Look at total yards. The white team has 359. Blue team has 180. Riley Leonard with a chance to lead a game-winning drive here for Blue. Clock running again. You want a six? You want a prediction? Hit me. He's going to take that for touchdown. Oh, <laughs> Guaranteed. I am a little surprised. I mean, there's five minutes left in the game. But they want to give Eric Leonard some opportunities here. The coach Higgins. did say, I mean, just with the three quarterbacks on the roster, you'd see Riley play most of the game. Ham's kick bounces through with 5.50 to play in the fourth quarter. The blue team will take over. So big story in the ACC this year is no more divisions. Three rivals for each team. Clemson trying to turn that offense around. DJ Uyunglele is at Oregon State now. Kate Klubnick takes over at quarterback Garrett Riley, the new offensive coordinator. What jumps out to you here, Foxy? Well, listen, I think Drake May is probably the, the headliner in terms of this, this conference. But I think this quarterback right here at Duke, Riley Leonard, is going to compete for for being one of the top quarterbacks and maybe the ACC player of the year. I think that's maybe a bold prediction, but. There is nothing Duke fans would love more than taking that award from the Carolina quarterback. If, they can, if, if Duke wins 10 games this year with that schedule, I mean, that would be incredible. Absolutely. Jalen Coleman on the catch. Picks up no gain on first down. Trey Freeman with the tackle. Duke in the hurry up here as the clock winds under 530. Leonard completes Malik Bowen Sims. His busy night continues. Sets up third down and short. Leonard's thrown two touchdowns tonight to Jalen Calhoun, J5, as he calls him, and Nick Lampert. Of the receivers that are in the game now, Hagen's probably the most experienced. He's at the bottom of the screen. Maybe he gets a look here. Instead, Leonard looking left, and they'll blow the whistle. On the red jersey, that goes down as a sack, and they'll give it to R.J. Oben, who throws his hands up, 94 and white. Well, you got four and a half minutes here left in this ball game. Running clock. You're not going to punt the ball here, right? I think that's what... Mike Elko's deliberating here. You do have three timeouts. It is. I don't know if they're eligible to use them <laughs> in, at this point in the it broadcast. The <laughs> Fourth down and nine. Riley Leonard and the blue team is going for it. Leonard from the pocket fires on target incomplete though. It was Cole Finney, the tight end, and great coverage from Josh Pickett. Yeah, Pickett, probably one of the better cornerbacks, not just on this team, but in the ACC, does a terrific job coming from behind. The hook and swat gets the ball out. That's a big pass breakup on fourth down. Coach Santucci says Josh Pickett has really taken the approach of improving at the small things this offseason. And that was a big one. The fourth down stop for the white team, which might ice it for the underdogs tonight in the Duke spring game. Welcome back to Wallace Wade Stadium. Yeah, the blue team is back on offense because of an interception by James Hobson. 
It was the first play of a new drive for the white team. Intercepted in the end zone. Duke blue team starts at the 20. And Riley Leonard's back in there. He spins it a little too tall for his intended target, Makai Wall. Yeah, it looked like he had an opportunity deep in the end zone there, but just batted up in the air and hops. He's had himself a really strong game here tonight. Comes up with the interception. They could have called pass interference there, by the way. That, that was a little bit of face guarding. But uh, I'll say it's not. I think a little home cooking for the blue team. I would say yes. Leonard on the sidearm throw complete. A gain of six on second down to Samir Hagens. And the two-minute drill continues with the running clock. Leonard from an empty set. Rifles the pass complete to Hagens again. That's a first down. And the clock's going to wind. So they're getting used to the new rules already. There you go. Except this would be stopped. That's if this right. were a real game, the final two minutes. But in this game, which is not a real game, they're going to continue to run the clock the final minute. Leonard looking same direction. Hagens almost had a one-hand grab. Josh Pickett on the coverage. And he might have been locked up on that left arm of Hagens. No clock stoppage after the They got to hustle. Pass. They got to keep going. Take shots down the field. And I guarantee these receivers are gassed out there having to hustle. Yeah, this is running nice. deep ball after deep ball. Leonard somehow completes it to Lampert, who caught a touchdown earlier tonight. It went out of bounds, but the clock winds. After the gain of seven, it's third down and three. Leonard rolling, throws. Nice pass and a completion. No, they, no, no they, they rolled it incomplete the last second. So now they got to take a Hail Mary. A backbreaker for Blue. <laughs> One shot? Take a shot? Uh, Elko has the headset off, and he that's says, all she wrote. Let's get out of here healthy. That's a win. An upset, maybe. The Duke white team takes down the blue team led by Riley Leonard, 19-14. Uh-oh, Elko's got a mic. He's got a stick microphone. Big takeaway, oh. Foxy? Well, it was fun to watch Riley Leonard. I think he's going to have a special uh, season here in the fall. And Mike Elko's done such a terrific job with this program. Turned this program around from three wins in 2021 to nine wins last year. Expect big things come September 2nd. Mike Elko, go get a pizza at Mesa Luna. For our entire crew, led by Caleb Waters and Chad Lamb and my partner Dustin Fox, Richard Simmons, Rich Gaynor up here in the booth. I'm Drew Carter saying adios from Wallace Wade. Enjoy the summer. We'll see you in the fall.